Okay, guys, so today I'm going to show you how you can build any of those portfolio websites for yourself. So these are all free templates here that you can use to build your website. And yet, as you can see, they look absolutely amazing and really professional. And some of these look like they were designed by some big web agency. I mean, look at it. This one looks like a website that a web agency would easily charge five to ten thousand dollars for it. OK, so by the end of this tutorial, you will end up with a unique portfolio website designed to fit your exact business model. OK, so let's get started. OK, guys, so the very first step is to take care of our hosting and domain name registration. So for this, simply click on the very first link in the description below where it says get hosting here. Now, it's important that you use that link because it will bring you to a co-branded page that we have with Hostinger, which will give you access to 75 percent discount. And if you use the coupon code MrWeb at checkout, you'll get an extra 10% discount on top. So simply click on this link here. And this is going to bring you to this page. And again, this is a co-branded page that we have with Hostinger. So special prices, obviously, you no know, special discount. If you scroll down the page, you'll find different plans. So as you can see, start from only $2.99 per month. Next one up is $3.99. And then the cloud startup is $9.99. So what's the difference between those three? Well, basically is the performances and the speed. So as you can see, this one is standard performance. This one is up to five times faster and this one up to 10 times faster. So now it depends on the amount of resources that you need. If you're only running one website, this one is absolutely fine. Now, if you're running multiple websites and also maybe e-commerce websites, you might want to consider either this one or this one, depending on the amount of traffic and visitors that you're expecting every month. And also with Hostinger, you get a lot of free stuff. You know, you get free SSL certificate, free email, and also a free domain name. These options normally are paid with most web hosting companies. So in this case, you get those for free as well. And if you go for the business plan here, you get free CDN as well, content delivery network. Now, obviously, they provide you with daily backup and weekly backup. As you can see, the entry level here is weekly backup. So they will back up your website once a week. If you go for the 399 one, you'll get a daily backup as well. So every day you have a full backup of your website. So feel free to select any of those plans. You can start with the 299 one and you can always upgrade to the next one up later down the line if you need more resources. So let's get started with this one here. So click on add to cart. And from here, you're going to select your billing cycle. So as you can see, it goes from 12 months to 48 months. Obviously, the longer your billing cycle, the more you're going to save. As you can see, it's $2.99 per month, but here you're going to save $432, here $216, and right here $108. So what does that mean exactly? Well, basically, if you lock in your price at $2.99 for a year, after that, you will renew at $9.99. If you select 24 months, it will renew at $7.99 and 48 months, it will renew at $6.99. So basically for four years, you're going to pay $2.99 per month instead of $6.99. So feel free to select any of those. So let's continue on with the 48 months deal here. OK, so we scroll down the page. You can create your account. You select your payment method. And right here, we have a quick overview of how much it's going to cost you. So as you can see here, the normal price should be $707 down to $176. So this is a massive saving, isn't it? Now I also have a coupon code for you. So here type in Mr. Web. So there you go. And as you can see, the normal price $176.53, including taxes. Now let's apply this. And as you can see, now it's only $158.88. So that means that you get to enjoy a massive discount of 78%. And then after this, proceed to check out. And now you can log into your account. So let's do this together. So simply enter your email address and password and let's log in. So this is your hosting a dashboard. And right here on top, as you can see, you can claim your free domain. So for this, let's click on claim domain. And right there, you're going to type the domain name that you want to register. So for instance, your domain name. OK, and then select your extension. As you can see, you have .in for India, .me for personal websites. Dot com. This is the most popular one, obviously. You also have .net, .xyz, .hub, .host. So select the one that suits your type of business. So let's go ahead with .com as an example here. And then we're going to check the availability. So let's click on this. And as you can see, this one is already taken. So you might have to look for a different variation of your domain name. So in our case here, we're just going to try to register learn with Mr. Web, OK, as a .com. So again, let's check the availability. So this one is available. So we're going to claim our domain. OK, so let's do this together. So let's claim our domain. And then by law, you have to enter your details here, obviously, you know, because you have to know who's registering the domain name. So let's click on the next step. So I'm going to fill this out very quickly. So there you go. And now finish registration. Very good. So now let's click continue. 
Very good, as I can see, the email verification is pending at the moment. So basically go to your mailbox and click on the link that's inside that email. So we have done that already, so now we can refresh. Very good, as you can see, now it's active and verified as well. Now we can set up our server. So we go back home here. So depending on which plan you purchase, maybe premium, business or cloud, you will see one of those sections here, okay? So when it's not set up yet, you will have a button like this one just next to it. So again, it could be premium, business or cloud. Either of those is absolutely fine, you know? So now click on setup. Now we're gonna click on start now. And right here, you're gonna go through a few different questions. It's like a setup wizard basically, you know, to help you set up your hosting. So as you can see, I have a few questions here. What are you creating the website for? So you can select either of those or you can skip all together. I would advise that you skip this one all together, you know? Right here, what are you going to do? Are you going to create a new website or migrate a website? Well, in our case, we're going to create a new website. So select this. So do you want to build this with AI or ourselves? Well, we're going to build this ourselves. So just keep this step all together now. And you're going to select your domains. So normally it should show up automatically. But if you have more than one domain registered, you might click on the drop down menu and select the one that you want to assign to this. And then click select. And now right here, you're going to select your server. So this should be normally the nearest either to you or to your target audience. So let's say if you're based in the United States, selling to people in the United States, well, you select either of those two here, but maybe you're based in the United States, maybe selling exclusively in Europe, in which case you might select one of those servers here, okay? So because we're based in Ireland here, we can select either Netherlands or maybe United Kingdom. So United Kingdom should be nearest. So let's click on this and now you click change very good and now we're going to finish our setup so as you can see now it's taking care of everything we can see the progress line so now as you can see it's installing the ssl certificate for us automatically very good so we're done already as you can see well done you are ready so from here you can either go and see your website so we don't need that because we haven't built anything yet so we're going to go back to our control panel okay so let's click on manage site there you go and we're back to our dashboard now so now from here, we're going to create an email address and also we're going to install WordPress on our server. So first, as you can see, it says free email setup is not finished. So let's click on the manage here. Very good. So as you can see, I've paid plans as well. I would go with the free one. Absolutely no problem with this, you know, so I'll click select. So let's create our email address. So maybe info at you're going to enter your password and then a recovery email just in case. I'm just going to put hello at mrweb.tv. OK, and now we're going to create our new account. And there you go, as you can see, we have a new email address now and you can access it using the web mail. So if you click on this, you can open this in a new tab. So this is your email address, enter your password as well and click login. And there you go, as you can see, this is your mailbox, basically inbox and sent and spam and archive. So basically you can access all your emails immediately from here. And now we can go back to our dashboard. OK, so from here, we're going to install WordPress. So right here, you have website, click on this expand and as you can see you have wordpress and auto installer this is the one we need to click on okay so click on auto installer and now for this type of project we just need wordpress we don't need woocommerce woocommerce is an e-commerce platform we just need wordpress on its own so what we're going to do is click on this or select so first let's enter the website title so maybe learn with mr web make sure the admin email is correct and then create a username and a password as well now we move to the next step so right here you can select if you want automatic updates or not so it is advised to use this option here update only to minor version but that's really up to you if you want to automatically update to the newest version you can select this one here all together again that's really up to you okay and then click install and there you go guys you can see this is done already so we have everything installed you know lightspeed cache object cache ssl certificate so now you can edit your website by clicking on, on this button here. So I'll click on that, it will open up in a new tab and this will give us access to our WordPress dashboard. Very good, so welcome to our WordPress dashboard. So from here, the first step is to do a bit of cleaning up. There's a lot of things that we don't need basically, okay? So for this, we go to plugins and then install plugins. And right here, as you can see, we've asked at anti-spam and hello Dolly. Definitely don't need that. You can tick those two boxes and then delete, apply, okay. Very good. And we have Lightspeed Cache here. Deactivate that while we work on the website. You can always enable it at the end of our project. Now we go to our settings in general. And then right here, make sure your site title is correct. So this is maybe your website name, your company name, business name. Right here with a tagline. So this could be a USB, maybe a slogan. So I'm just going to put here, let's build a beautiful portfolio website with Mr. Web. Here, make sure that the admin email address is correct configure the date and time format depending on your location and then save changes and now we go to permalinks 
and right here make sure that you select post name so this is very important for seo but also from your visitors point of view it's much easier to read as well scroll down the page save changes and that's basically it for the initial settings now let's have a look at our website so hover on the website name visit site right click open in a new tab and there you go so this is what it looks like at the moment so this is the default theme that comes with wordpress and as you can see it's very basic anyway so we're going to replace this with our own theme so for this we go to this website here codeinteractive.com and as always i'll leave all the links in the description below so we go to all demos and right here you're going to look for portfolio and then select free because we're going to build this for free okay and as you can see these are all the different templates available uh, ready-made templates and we can just install that in just a few clicks of the mouse so as you can see you have one for product photography an art shop a video showcase a concept art portfolio a movie portfolio what do we have here illustration photography branding creative agency and so on and so on so feel free to select any of those depending on your industry or field of expertise or maybe just your preferences basically okay now if you're not too sure you can always hover on top and click on them and it will open up in a new tab so this is what the website will look like as you can see beautiful images again so now it's really up to you to select the one that suits your your business model and also uh, i suppose your preferences you know so for this one i think i'm going to use this one personally i think it looks absolutely fantastic and uh, i think it looks really really professional so again, like I said, feel free to select any of those, okay? So what we need to do basically is click on the one that you, you like, just like this. And right here by the side, you can see there's a button here that says download. Simply click on this and then save this on your hard drive. There you go. And now we can go back to our WordPress dashboard and install it, okay? So for this, we go to Appearance, Themes, Add New, Upload, Choose File. And now select the file that we just downloaded. Open, Install. And then activate so this is done and as you can see right here we are prompted to install the code essential add-on so let's do that together let's click on this very good and now as you can see by the side you have two additional tabs we have core portfolio so this is to manage all our portfolio different categories tags and all of that and right here we have the code essential add-on so this is the one we need first and you go to the import section so again here look for portfolio reversion and then select the one you want to install okay so any of these like i said you know based on your personal taste and preferences and uh, use case scenario as well so let's go ahead maybe with this one again like i said i think it looks absolutely outstandingly good so i'm just going to import this okay and right here as you can see we need to install a few plugins so we have elementor qi add-ons for elementor contact form 7 and smash balloons these are the only four we need the other two here we're not going to install them this is profile press this is for membership and hubspot we don't need them okay so what you need to do basically is click on install wait a few seconds and then activate and then do the same with the other three activate install activate install and activate very good and here use the drop down menu and you're going to select all so we want to port the full demo okay so let's click all and here make sure this toggle switch is on so you're going to import all the attachments so that's all the images basically okay now click import demo confirm very good as you can see now it's fully imported so that just took a few seconds so now we can go back to our home page and refresh so this is what it looks to look like now let's refresh have a quick look and there you go guys look at this this looks absolutely fantastic so this website has been recreated for us in just a few clicks of the mouse just a few seconds and look at this and I'm telling you, any web design agency will charge five to ten thousand dollars to design something similar to this, very similar to this. And look at the menu section here; that looks absolutely outstanding, beautiful. Okay, now let me show you how you can customize this and make it your own. Okay, so we go back to our WordPress dashboard, and from here we're going to go to Pages, All Pages, and right-click on this and open in a new tab. So it's handy to have different tabs open. So I have the front end, we have our pages, and here we have everything else from the back end. So we can easily go from one to the other. So if you go to your pages here, so you can dismiss that maybe. Very good. So as you can see, we have all our different pages here. About us, our contact page, home page, our services, and team. And if you go to the front end, let's go to our menu section. These are basically all our different pages, like you said, you can see them here, okay? So basically what we're going to do now is to edit the home page. If you hover on top, you can see you have edit, quick edit, 
and edit with Elementor. So you can see this one was designed using Elementor. So we're going to edit with Elementor. So click on this one here. And here you might see this message. So your site doesn't have a default kit. So what you need to do basically now is recreate the kit. So click on this. Very good. So now click on all of these buttons. So regenerate files and data, uh, sync library and recreate kit. Save changes. And now let's go back to our pages, all pages. And again, hover on top and edit with Elementor. Very good. And as you can see, this is our page now. Okay, so right here, as you can see, we have the navigator. So this will allow you to go from one section to the other and locate them very easily. So you don't really need this at the moment. So you can close this and you can always open it afterwards by clicking on this button here. You know, you can call it every time you need it. So let me show you how this works. So this is basically called Elementor, which is an easy drag and drop page builder. And as you can see, if you click on this, this is a section and inside the section you have different elements. So if you hover on top of each, you will see a purple color border. If you click on those six dots, so that's basically to edit the section itself. And every section might have different columns. So as you can see, this one is a column. And inside the column, you have maybe a few different elements, which are called widgets. And this one is a title. This one, let's see, it's a title as well. What's this one? This one is an image. Okay, so that's basically how this works. And then you can add and remove as many as you want. So we're going to go through all of this together now, how to configure your homepage. And again, this will apply to any of the demo templates available from the Code Interactive website. Okay, so first let's start with our hero section right here. So as you can see, you have an image that's very unique with all the fruits and all that. So this might not be uh, related to your business model or something like this. So let me show you how you can change this. So if you right click on it and edit the section, if you go to style, as you can see, this is the image itself. So now we can replace that with whatever we want, okay? So let's click on this to change the image. As you can see here, you have the media library with all the different images available on the website at the moment. And now we're going to upload our own file. OK, so select file and I found a few online. So this one here is not too bad. And this one as well. So we can try a few different variations. OK, so open. OK, so let's try this one here with those uh, nice colors, you know, so select. There you go. As you can see, this is not actually too bad at all. But now, obviously, we would have to change the color of this section here underneath. Unless you want to keep it, obviously, you know. But we need a bit more contrast. But I think this is not bad. Now, we can try the other one as well, you know, just to see how it would look like, you know. So select. Let's have a look. That's not too bad either, you know. I mean, this is this is quite nice. Obviously, it is a, a bit of white spacing, but we can easily sort that out. So I would say we might keep this one, you know, this is maybe a bit more relevant. So now if we go to the, the, the advanced settings here, as you can see, we have a few padding. So padding basically it's uh, spacing all around it, you know. So at the bottom here, we can see 17%. So we might want to reduce this. Okay, just like this. And there you go. Now, as you can see, those two sections are touching each other. And this header here, it's absolutely fine the way it is. The menu stands out and we can still see our logo as well. So you might keep it like this. OK, and then right here, as you can see, we have the image so we can easily replace that with our own. So this would be nice to have an actual picture of your team, maybe your premises or your inside. Maybe uh, if you have an open plan office or whatever, see everyone there, you know, a nice picture. So can people relate to it? And people like to see people's faces anyways, you know. So if you click on the small pencil here, as you can see, this is our image. And now we can replace that with our own. So let's click on this and let's upload a new image, select file. So again, I found one online, you know, this one here. So open, very good. So this is what it looks like. So select. And as you can see, that fits perfectly. You know, this actually works better with this background, with our new background here. So as you can see, you can give it a totally different feel as well. Even though it was quite flashy and very modern and unique, you can actually make it look exactly the way you want. So as you can see, you can have a starter template here and make it your own basically. OK, so let's scroll down now. So we have this section here. So again, this is really up to you what you want to do with this one. You know, you might want to change this around a little bit. I think it looks very nice, to be honest, you know. So here we have a title, so Digital Studio Happy Monsters. So this is Happy Monsters, I suppose that's probably the name of the company. So right here you change this to your own name, possibly, you know, your business name or possibly a tagline or whatever it is, okay? So let me show you how you can do so. Click on the small pencil here. So you have the title, okay, Digital Studio. So let's just change this to Mr. Web Studio, okay? 
So as you can see, it's all capitalized. How does that work? Well, basically, if you go to the styling feature here, from here, you can stylize everything related to that widget, okay? So this is the style, generic style. So what we need is this title here, okay? So title style, as you can see, it's H1 and you have the typography here. So typography, it's everything related to the font. So you can change everything related to that font here, right here. So as you can see, you could put everything in lowercase or maybe uppercase. I think it looks a lot better like this anyways, you know. You can select which font you want and then you can change the size as well. You can see, you can make it bigger or smaller. Again, that's really up to you, you know, which size you want. And then you can uh, change the weight as well, maybe thinner maybe thicker or extra bold like we had it you know uh, the line spacing and so on so this is basically where you can customize everything related to your uh, font here and your widget so you can change the color as well as you can see you know whatever maybe you want it in black uh, mr web and then happy monsters you know whatever really so this is again a matter of preferences so let's keep it in black for now i think it's a nice contrast and then we can do the same with the one underneath okay so right here instead of happy monsters we're gonna put portfolio okay just like this and that's it that looks good i think okay so now before we continue on with this i'd like to change the background color here because at the moment it's a yellowish mustard i don't know what exactly this is uh, but as you can see in the image there's a lot of different shades of blue this is blue this is blue this is blue and even a little bit of blue here so we could maybe have a, a darker between dark and, and bright blue you know a shade really similar to this so let's try that together so basically click on the section here and again we go to style and then here in the color so let's try this okay let's try a blue maybe maybe slightly darker let me see uh maybe it has to be bright enough but not too bright you know just a happy medium perhaps something like this okay now copy this uh code here and we're going to do the same with the section here underneath so I'll click on the section again style Click on this, paste it here, and we might do the same with the one here at the bottom, okay? So click on this, image, paste, and let's see what this looks like, okay? So as you can see, we have a totally different feel. We started up with a, a, a template that's very unique, and now you're making it even more unique. You can, you can make it really your own now, as you can see, you see? This is very nice, isn't it? Now this is up to you. You can actually change all the colors. You could have this in a color, this one another color, and this section in another one again. You know, that's really up to you. So I'm just giving you all the different options here, okay? And again, as you can see now, this is giving us a more conventional feel. Now, if you're going for something different or something more unique and flashy, obviously you can change the color for something else, okay? So now I'm just showing you different features, different options. Maybe you want to go with something bright like magenta, you know? So don't be afraid. You can play with those colors, okay? So I'm going to go with the flashy pink like this, okay? So select the color and then let's change this with the others. And there you go. As you can see, that's not too bad either. And obviously at the moment you have all these images here. But once you replace that with your own images, you have to see how it looks like with the background all around it. So if your images are more darker, you know, darker images, you might go for something brighter. If it's bright images like this, you go with a darker background, obviously, you know. So that's basically the rule. So right here on top, as you can see, you have all these icons, etc., etc. So how can you replace this? Well, it's very easy if you click on this. So basically here you can select an icon. You can link the back to an internal page as well. And then you have the content here. As you can see, this is the sentence underneath. And we have the button as well. You can add a button if you wanted to, you know. So maybe by now, as you can see, we'll add a button, a call to action button underneath. So you can link this back to an actual page or maybe your, your shopping page or maybe for them to buy some of your art or something like this, you know. Again, this is very flexible, you know. You can do literally whatever you want. And if you add a button, you can also link the icon directly to that page as well. As you can see, you can replace the hashtag here with the actual URL, okay. So to replace the icon, all you have to do is click on this. It will give you access to all these different icons here. So whatever it is that you're saying here, okay? So normally here, I would say this is the one of the first things that your visitors will see when they scroll down. So maybe you could highlight your main skills or maybe the main benefits or the main features of your product or service, okay? So here, instead of draw, we could replace that with something else, okay? So instead of draw, design, create, and develop, we can replace that with our own uh, things okay so as you can see you have the the general uh, then co content button uh, button icon separator and all that so how can you change the title here well you go to content and as you can see on top you have the title okay so we can replace that with skill 
for instance, skill number one, okay? And then here you would replace the description, okay? So here, this is the description of skill number one to emphasize the main benefits of that skill. And you would do the same with all of them. So as you can see here, we're using three lines. So you would try to do the same with the other. So they'll be lined up properly and evenly distributed and the same height, basically, okay? So let me do that with the other three here. So there you go. Now we have skill number one, two, three, and four. So now, what if you only wanted to display three skills here instead of four? Well, you can always delete the last one. Hover on top, as you can see, I have the icon here for the column. Right click on it and then delete. There you go. Now you only have three, okay? Now, if you wanted more than that, maybe five instead of four, well, you can always revert back anyways and add an additional one, okay? So as you can see, we have history. So if you click on this, you have all the actions you've taken so far. So if I click on this, as you can see, we'll revert back to the previous step and you can go farther uh, down the line as well. So now we have four of them and now you can right click on the column here and then you can duplicate it, okay? Just like this. And now we have five of them and now you feel free to modify this one to be skill number five, okay? I'm just gonna delete this one for now, okay? So I think four is absolutely fine. Now you may have noticed we have an additional widget here on top. So if you click on this, you can see this is a menu anchor. So what's that exactly? Okay, so let's go to the front end first and let's refresh our page. There you go. So this is our new page, the way we designed it. Wow, that looks good, doesn't it? So if you scroll back up here, as you can see with this uh, this image here. So if you click on this, it will bring you automatically to this section. So it's a nice little effect, you know, so it will drive you immediately from here to the main section there. And this is what the anchor is for, basically. So if you go back here on this image and click on it, we have right here at the bottom, hashtag one. And this is how you use an anchor, basically. So if you click on this, this is the ID, okay? And if you go there, this is basically the action, hashtag one. And this is how you can go from one section to the other. So if you want to keep this, just leave it as is. If you don't want it, you simply delete that and that's basically it, okay? So let's scroll down the page now and let's have a look at our main section here. And that's the whole point of this tutorial, obviously, is the main portfolio. So if you click on this, as you can see, it says portfolio list essentials. So you have all the features to customize your portfolio. So where are all these images stored? Well, basically for this, we have to go back to the back end. And this is why we keep all the tabs opened next to each other like this, okay? So for now, we go to code portfolio, as you can see here. And this is basically where all our images are stored. So here you can see of the title, we have the author, the categories, and also tags. So we can use any of those parameters to display them in the front end. So normally by default, the first thing you need to do is to create the different categories. So if you have different categories here at the moment, we only have one, which is called branding. But maybe in your case, you might need more than one category, okay? So let's create a few together. So maybe in addition to branding, you also do packaging. And all you have to do is add new portfolio gallery, okay? And maybe you do some printing as well, and perhaps logo design as well, okay? Just like this. And these would be your four categories. So once you have this, now you can also add tags. So you can do this manually by clicking on this section here in which you can add all your tags, or you can do so once you upload the images. So either way is absolutely fine. So now let's edit one of them, okay, to show you what's inside. So you have telescope here. So if you go back to the front end and let's discover this one. So that's telescope. If you click on it, it will bring you to another page. As you can see, this is the category page, okay? As you can see, you have the breadcrumbs here. So this is branding and then telescope. And here you have three images, okay? And you also have a small description here. So this could be different sections uh, of your uh, type of business, maybe uh, the type of uh, services that you provide that you want to emphasize here as part of your portfolio. So this could be skill number one, for instance, you know? And then you could have another one for skill number two, three, and four. And like we said, you have different categories as well. You have branding, we have printing, we have uh, uh, packaging, etc. So you can use this in different ways, obviously. So let's go back here. Let me show you what's inside. So if you open telescope, so basically here on top, you'll have your title, your description. And if you scroll down, as you can see here, we have the media settings. We can add more than one image. As you can see at the moment, we have this as a gallery. We can add a single image as well. Now, depending on your case scenario and, and how you run your business, basically, and what you want to display online, you might want to select a different option. We can also upload a video, in which case you just type the URL. So this could be a YouTube video, maybe Vimeo as well, you know. 
and hear the audio as well. So this could be for podcast. If you want to display a, a podcast online, you can use this as well. So let's keep it as a gallery for now. And then if you scroll down the page, you have additional settings as well. So this is the layout. So how do you want to display this? Maybe one column, two columns, three columns, four columns, up to six columns, as you can see. So at the moment, we have three columns, as you can see here in, on the home page. There you go. So that's three columns, but this is defined in our actual uh, widget itself. So as you can see, if you click on this, you have the, the amount of columns here, three. So you can define this immediately from your widget here in the, the Elementor page, okay? Or you can define it here. So if you select default, you'll be able to select how many columns immediately here from Elementor, okay? So if you scroll down the page, with all that information here, as you can see, you have the client, the name, the link, and what you want to do with that link, open in a new window. So let me show you in the front end. So if I click on this, scroll down here, as you can see by the side, you have all the information here. So this is the client's name, called Interactive. And if you click on this, it will bring you to the actual website. So you can do so as well if you want to actually link this directly to your customer's website and you can do so by using that feature here. So clearly this will build trust and authority as well because people will see that this is an actual website and a real customer as well. And you can add as many as you want. All you have to do is click add item and you can add another one and that's basically it, okay? Now here by the side, we have the portfolio categories. So you can select multiple categories as well if you wanted to, and you can create categories immediately from here. So like we mentioned with the tags is the same principle, you know? You don't have to create them all in the back end. You can add them manually yourself from here. So all you have to do is click on this, add new portfolio your tag and type your tag here okay and then add new portfolio tag and that's basically it this is how you add tags very easy isn't it and then here underneath you have the featured image so what's this exactly well that's basically the one that will show up here in the front end so out of those images select maybe one which is your main image to represent this section okay so that's basically it for this and then after that all you have to do is basically save you know so click update and that's basically it. this is how you can create your single portfolio and then you can go back to WordPress and add a new one. And then back to Elementor. Now, let me show you all the different settings here. So as you can see, the list appearance at the moment is gallery, but you can also select masonry. So what's the difference between the two? Well, masonry is very handy, especially if your images are not the same size. Maybe one of them is portrait. The other one is horizontal. Maybe one is square and so on and so on. At the moment, as you can see, all the images have the same ratio and the same size. But if they were different sizes, then you can use masonry, okay? So image proportion, as you can see, this is original, but you can change the size as well. So even if your images are not the same size, you can resize them here to display properly. So maybe you want them to all be square. All you have to do is select that option here and basically they'll all be the same size, you know? So right here, how many columns do you want to display? As you can see at the moment, it's three, but you can select maybe four or maybe two, whichever you prefer, obviously, you know? So this is uh, flexible again. So let's go with three, I think it's fine. And then you have the column responsiveness, so basically how it will display on tablet and mobile. So as you can see, it's pretty fine at the moment. You can have default as well, or perhaps custom. So custom, as you can see for each size devices, as you can see, this is for a tablet, a smaller tablet, uh, a phone, a large phone, etc. You know, you can select how many columns you want to display. So this is very handy. So you can test this out as well right here immediately, you know. So all you have to do is go here at the bottom, as you can see, of responsive mode. So click on this, and now you can select which device you want to preview. So maybe on tablets, as you can see, tablets, three columns, which is fine. And then let's see on mobile phones what it looks like. Again, three columns here. So maybe on mobile phones, you might display only two, maybe just one, okay? So here you can select how many columns you want to display. So let's say two, there you go. So that looks absolutely fine, but let's try maybe just one, and then you'll have six images like this in a row, which is maybe uh, best for a mobile phone. You know, if you scroll down the page, you have a big uh, image like this, and if they tap, as you can see, they can see the content of our category here, you know? So this is fine. And you can do the same with the others here. Obviously different mobile phones have different resolutions. So the newest iPhones and Android phones would be a higher resolution, maybe 769 pixels, in which case you maybe display two columns, you know? This one maybe two as well, and this one one because it's a lower resolution, obviously. And you can keep three for devices that display a much higher resolution. So this would be a laptop, I suppose, and this most likely a tablet, okay? So that's how you do it. So also don't forget to click update from time to time you know 
So let's revert back to the desktop mode here. And now here by the side, you can define if you want to add spacing in between. So at the moment, as you can see, there is no gap between those images, but you can add some if you wanted to, you know? So maybe a tiny gap, maybe a normal one, maybe a huge one. As you can see, it gives you a different feel, obviously. So again, depending on your, on your taste and preferences, you can select any of those options. I think it looks fine without without uh, the spacing at the moment, but again, it's a matter of uh, preferences. And then here we can enable pagination. So what's that about? Well, basically, if you decide to display maybe 48 pictures and you display six at a time, it will obviously display that in multiple pages, in which case you can have the page number here underneath and they can go from one to the other. So if you want to enable this, simply click yes. If you don't want it, simply leave it as is, okay? So here, how do you define what you display here? Well, this is in the query. So let's open this. And this is where you will define how many posts you want to display. So as you can see at the moment, we have six, but you can display maybe up to 12, maybe 24, whatever it is, you know? And like we said, you could then enable the pagination if you wanted to. So how do you want to display them? By date, by ID, or the menu, or just randomly? That's again up to you, you know? So let's keep it by date for now. And then the order, ascending or descending, you know? So this is basically, if you select, for instance, by title and ascending, as you can see now, our images are in a different order. So if I put this back to date, there you go. This is basically from the latest to the newest, okay? And then we have the additional parameters. So this is a very good one just to show you here. So for now, we'll fetch the images based on date and ascending, but you can tweak this around as well. As you can see, you have the post ID, the taxonomy slug and author name. So the post ID, if you select this, basically you can select specific post uh, from the back end. So if you go here, as you can see, you have all these different posts. If one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. Okay. Now, if you hover on top of any of them, as you can see here, it says post equals 49. So this is the ID. Okay. So if you go back here and put 49, okay. And now you can add more than one. So if I add a comma here, and then we go and select the second one. And as you can see, the ID of this one is 453. So let's add this together, 453. And there you go. And this is how you can add specific posts yourself. So these are handpicked basically, okay? Or you can have a taxonomy slug. So what is this exactly? Well, you can select the category or specific tags, okay? So I'm going to show you how to add a category here yourself. So we need the slug. So we go back here, we go to our categories. And the slug is basically here, okay? So if you select branding, copy, and then paste it here. And there you go. As you can see, these are the same images, obviously, you know. But if you had multiple categories, this is where you could add them. And you can do so with the ID as well. So if you go back here, as you can see, if you hover on top, again, in the bottom page here, we can see the ID as well, which is ID 11. So instead of the slug, you can use 11 here. And you can delete this, obviously, you know, in which case it will display all our branding images in portfolio here. So let's delete this now. And our last option here is the author name. So you can select the author slug. So here, we, where can you find this? Well, again, we go back to our dashboard here and then we go to users. As you can see, there's only one here. OK, so this is basically the username. So if we select this control C and put it here. There you go. This is how you can display this by author. Okay, so that's basically it. So let's go back to nothing here. We'll just keep it simple the way it is. And then we have the layout as well. And basically here, this is where you can customize what's displaying here on top when you hover on each uh, image, okay? So as you can see, you can select hover on top, info below, info follow, or on hover. So let's say if I select this one here, as you can see, different feel altogether, you know, again, it's just a matter of preferences, you know, what you prefer. As you can see now, these are underneath, then you can have it follow as well. So basically, if you hover, it will follow uh, the cursor of your mouse. So again, it's just a matter of preferences, you know, but just keep it the way it is. And then here you can customize everything, the color of the title, the font, the thickness of the font, etc., etc. And that's everything for our portfolio list essential. So again, like I said, don't forget to click update. And now we can move on to the next section. And again, to change the content, all you have to do is basically click on this small pencil here and then click on the item here. And as you can see, this is where you can change the content. OK, so feel free to type whatever you want here. Uh, all the same. So underneath here, we have an animation here. So if I click on this, this is called a divider, but the image is not actually there. OK, so what you have to do is click on the main section here, the, the section itself. You go to style 
So as you can see here by the side, you have the video link. So you can replace that with a YouTube or Vimeo link. Okay, so I just found one online here uh, from YouTube. So this one, is, the, the main purpose of this one is to look pretty basically, you know. But you can actually use one that uh, serves a purpose. Maybe you can have an aerial view of your premises, maybe uh, taken with a drone or maybe something like this, you know. Maybe you're walking through your premises and show your premises to everyone or something like this. But for the, the sake of our tutorial here, we're just going to use this one, okay. So after this, we can scroll down the page. Here, as you can see, we have some of our amazing clients. So you can replace this now as you can see a few images here you could replace that with actual logo maybe of the companies you've worked with and how can you do so well basically here by the side you have all the different items click on that and then you can change the image okay and then select whatever image you want so let's say if you had a logo it could look something like this you know so we select the logo and then you can add it and there you go so this is how you can change that and then if you don't need as many you can always delete and you can add more by clicking on this button. So pretty self-explanatory this far, okay? So next one here, we have a testimonial section. So you click, if you click on this, uh, as you can see, you have the different items. So if you click on that again, there you go. So this is basically where you can change the content. So you have the name here. You could have the occupation as well, you know, maybe director or something like this, you know? As you can see, you can add this. And this is your content. And you can have a title here as well. So I'm just going to type title. As you can see, it's in big, bold letters. So this is really up to you how you want to design this. Uh, it's flexible again, uh, very, very nice. So now we have the background image. So click on the section itself. You go to style and this is the image here. Now you can replace that with anything else, you know. So I'm just going to use this one as an example. Select. There you go. As you can see now, we have a totally different image. And as you can see, you can change the background. So click on this. And right there, you have the image uh, background, okay, for each one of them. So those testimonials could be of different colors as well so you could have one maybe in blue and then the next one could be perhaps in pink and so on and so on you know so let me try here maybe this one in a light purple and the next one maybe a darker blue or something like this you know let's try this together there you go and now as you can see they all have a different color so you can really play around with this you know so I don't think the image in the background is that good so maybe you can change this to something else maybe just a color so if you delete this, you can add your own color here and select from uh, from the palette here, okay? So maybe we're going to go with something bright again. Or we can use the same pink we had above, you know? Uh, you don't want to mismatch too much either. So we can fetch the color we had here, the pink. Okay, so Control c Very good. And now we go back to this section here and we're going to change that color, okay? So let's change this here, Control v Very good. I think that looks fine now. Perfect. Now, as you can see as well, the name, it doesn't stand out of the blue, you know, and this one is fine. And uh, the other one in pink, let's see, this is also should be in white, maybe. So if you click on this, you can even change the font color and we can change the author color. So maybe black for this one, uh, jet black, occupation, jet black as well. And for the other one, let's see, uh, we have the pink one. We said we're going to use white for this one. Okay, so white and white for this. Okay, very good. And the next one, let's see now. Let's click on it. Uh, yeah, this should be white as well, I suppose, you know. So let's go for white and white again. So let's put this to the test. So this is fine. This is okay. And this is better as well, you know. So I think it's much better like this. Now, I don't like those dots here at the bottom, to be honest. Uh, we can remove that as well. You have the slider setting here. And right there, you have enable slider pagination. You said no. And they go just the image on itself, you know. I think on its own, it's absolutely fine. Now, there's a bit of gap here for this one compared to the other one. Those two have a small gap. This one doesn't. It's because we have the name. So let's remove director here from this one. Okay. And then they all look the same. So this is the first one here. Going to remove the, uh, the occupation just like that. So obviously, if you do that for one, you need to do it for all of them. Otherwise, they, they will be mismatched in different height. So I think it's absolutely fine the way it is now. What we can do maybe is add a bit of a shadow effect. Let's try this, okay? So we go advanced and there we scroll down. We go to border and we're going to have use the, the box shadow. So click on this and let's see how this looks like. I think that looks fine actually. Yeah, It's adding a little something, you know? I think it looks good like this. Okay, we can keep it. Now it's really up to you. You don't have to. If you want to revert back, click on this arrow here and basically it'll be without anything. Perfect. Okay, let's continue on. So next we have our blog section here. 
So let's click on our widget. So as you can see, block list. And again, it's the same principle. You know, how many do you want to display as a gallery, etc., etc. So where do you find this from? Well, basically it's your post here, okay? As you can see, the rise of art, next generation, and so on and so on. So you can also have different categories and different tags. And then same principle, you know, as you can, you can display this as a gallery. And then here underneath, you can set the query. So how many do you want to display? And then you can define how many columns all together. So this is the same principle as our portfolio. So we've covered that already. So that's basically it. So let's scroll down and we have our last section here. So this is a very nice one for a call to action button. As you can see, contact us. So what do you want your visitors to do? Do you want them to call you, request a call back, uh, fill out a form, uh, book an appointment, whatever it is, just fill this out here, okay? Don't have any question, please fill out the form, uh, click below. And this can link back to the contact page basically, okay? So if you go back here, uh, let's go to our menu section and see the contact page. As you can see, you have a form here and contact numbers and all that. So perhaps we could link this button directly to this page. And as you can see it's forward slash contact, okay? So I'll copy this, now go back here, and now let's click on our button. There you go. And as you can see here, you're going to put the link, okay? So what we do, you don't have to put the full URL and just type it like this, forward slash, and then the, the trailing end of your address. So basically what's after your domain name, contact, okay? Just like that. And this will work. And as always, you can change the picture here, click on this, change the image for whatever you want and the color here as well. So basically for the color here, what you have to do is click on the column style and this is your color here. Okay, so you can replace that with whatever color you see fit. So now that's basically it. We're done now. So let's click update and let's go back to our home page. Let's see what it looks like. Very good. So as you can see, these are our new colors, uh, the image, the new header uh, image as well. Let's scroll down our different scales. What do we have? Our portfolio gallery here, our message, our new video, as you can see. Very nice, very nice. Uh, all our different clients. And here, testimonials, our blog post, and finally, the contact us page. So let's put this to the test. And there you go. As you can see, this is bringing us back to the contact page. So now let me show you how you can change the contact page and configure your uh, form here as well, okay? So for this, we go back to our WordPress dashboard. And again, we go to our pages, all pages, open in a new tab. And let's open our contact page. Again, edit with Elementor. So right here on top, edit section. And now you can see in style, this is the image. So you can replace that with whatever you want. I'm just going to keep it like this for now, but you understand the principle now. We've gone through this already. You can change the name here by just type, uh, clicking on the, the widget itself and the same here. Okay, very good. So let's call this one contact. And here we're going to put Mr. Web just underneath. Okay, so Mr. Web. Uh, what did we say? Mr. Web Studio. Very good. So right here, you're going to change your contact details, click on it, and then you can change the text right here. So let's take care of our contact form, which is mo most likely the, the trickiest one here on this page. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory, you know. So as you can see by the side, we have choose contact form 7, and here it says contact form 2. So where is that exactly? Well, that's another plugin installed on our WordPress dashboard. So we go back here, and as you can see by the side, we have... A contact here okay so that's the one basically and if you click on this it will reveal those two forms contact form one contact form two so this is using contact form seven which is a plugin an additional plugin uh, that will handle all your forms and inquiries okay so let's click on this one here to edit and as you can see it's not the most user-friendly one as you can see it's using code and all that I, I really don't like contact form seven to be honest you know so what we're going to do we're going to install another one all together so for this we go to plugins and find the contact form 7, deactivate, delete that thing all together. There you go. Bye bye. And now let's add a new one and type here WP form just like this. And this is a much easier one. It's a drag and drop form builder, which is way more intuitive and easier to work with. Okay. So install now, activate. Very good. And now by the side, you will find WP form. So click on this. We don't have no forms at the moment. So what you can do is basically click this, create your form. And what form do you want? Usually a simple contact form. You know, you have pre-made templates here that you can use. So we're going to start with this one. So use template. 
as you can see, I have name, last name, email address, and contact, okay? So maybe you want to ask their phone number as well. So all you have to do is basically grab one of those fields, so probably a single line text, and insert it and drag and drop it anywhere you want, okay? Just like this. Now, as you can see, single line text, click on this, and now you can ask for your phone number, okay? Just like this. So that looks nice. Now, to be honest, I don't like to have the labels like this on top. It's a bit old fashioned. So what you can do basically is click on any of them. And as you can see, you have the advanced section here. You have the option to hide the label. So if you hide this, as you can see, you see nothing. And now your first name, last name. So right here, you have the placeholder. Okay, so put here first name and here last name. Okay, and it will be basically here in the placeholder instead of actually having this as a as a label. So do the same with the other one. So advanced, hide label, placeholder text, email, and do the same with the other two, okay? Or perhaps something like this. Okay, so click save. And now you want to make sure that this will reach you, obviously. So you go to settings now, and then notifications. So if you scroll down, you will see there's an error message here. So you cannot use the simple admin email like it is because it doesn't belong to our domain name. As you can see, our domain name is learnwithmrweb.com. So what you need basically is to have an email address that belongs to that domain name. So right here, for instance, you could have info at and then your domain name and do the same here for the from. OK, so info at and then learn with Mr. Web. And now, as you can see, everything is fine. And then you go to confirmation. And once they click submit, this is the message they will see. OK, so thanks for contacting us. We will be in touch with you shortly. Now you can tweak this around and type any message you want to display. After this, click save. Very good. So now we can exit out of this. So back to our WordPress dashboard. And this time we go back to our contact page. And as you can see, this is using contact form 7. So what we're going to do is just delete this one. And let's insert a new one now, okay? And right here, look for short code. Drag and drop. And now we're going to insert our short code. So where is this one? Well, if you go back here to your WP form, as you can see by the side, you have the short code. Copy this, Control C, and paste it here, Control V. And as you can see, this is our contact form, okay? So let's click Update, and let's put this to the test. We go back here and refresh. And there you go, as you can see, first name, last name, email, phone number, and comment. So now there's maybe one thing that's maybe redundant here as the first and last, so maybe we can remove that. So we go back here, click on that again, and select this field. We go to Advanced, and Hide Sub-Labels, this one here, okay? So Save, exit out of this. Go back to the contact page, refresh, and there you go. That's a lot better already. I think this looks very, very, very nice. So underneath here, we have this map as well. So let me show you how you can change this. Now let's scroll down the page. Let's click on this uh, widget. Very good. So this is basically the location. So here you would type your address. Oh, let's do this together. So I found one online here. There you go. And as you can see, I have zoom in and zoom out and the height as well. So basically here, the smaller the number, the more you zoom out and the bigger the number, the more you zoom in. So it's really up to you, you know. So that's basically it. That's us done. And as always, don't forget to click update. And this is our homepage done now. So let's refresh. There you go. Contact page sorted out. And now the only thing left is to replace the logo with our own logo and change the menu section with whatever pages you want to display, obviously, you know. So as you can see here, we have the footer section as well. So let's take care of this. So we go back to our WordPress dashboard and from here scroll down the page and find the code essential add-ons and you have the options here. Click on this and right here we're going to change our logo first. So click on this section here, scroll down the page and this is where you can upload your own logo. Okay, so upload. I uh, already have it here. So select image and then save changes. So let's have a quick look, make sure it fits. So as you can see, it's way too big. So I might have to resize that as well, you know? So if you uploaded it like I did and you want to resize it, you don't have any software for that, you can do that immediately from within WordPress. So I'm just gonna open the media library here and select my um, logo here, edit image, and you can scale it now, okay? So let's click on this. As you can see, it's a big size logo. So we want something way smaller. So well, this is the width and this is the height. So the height should be maybe 85 pixels or something like this. And as you can see, it will be 417. So scale. And as you can see, the image was saved automatically. So you can close this. Now let's go back to the front end and refresh and see how it looks like. And there you go. As you can see, that looks a lot better already. 
So let's see how it looks like on the home page. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. So we can keep it like this. And now our menu section. So if you go to the menu section and click on this, as you can see, I have this image here in the background with the lemon. So you might want to change this or maybe just add a simple color. Let me show you how we can do so. So find the full screen menu here, scroll down the page. So this is where our image is. So you can remove the image and select a specific color. That's really up to you. Or you can upload your own image, okay? So let's say if I was to upload this one here and then select save changes. Let's go back here, let's refresh and let's see our menu. And there you go, that looks totally different immediately. Actually very nice as well. So we could keep it like this, okay? So this is how you change the image in the background. And now let me show you how you can change the menu items here. So for this, we go back to uh, our dashboard here, appearance, menus, and here are all the items, home, about, team, services, blog, and contact. And as you can see, this is exactly what we have here. Now, if you wanted to remove a page, maybe you don't want the blog, or maybe you don't want the services or team, whatever it is, all you can do is basically select a specific page. You can remove it if it's just one. If you remove more than one, you can bulk select. And let's see, I'm going to remove team, services, and perhaps about us. Remove selected items. There you go. Now they're all gone. Now, if you wanted to add a page that you don't have, you go to view all. And now let's re-add those. Okay. So we have our services, team, and about us. Add to menu. And now you can reorganize them. All you do is basically grab it and then place it wherever you want. So let's say services and maybe team as well, you know, let's put it here. Then you can edit the name itself. So click on the arrow here and maybe we'll just have services instead of our, our services. Okay. And that's basically it. Once you're done with this, click save menu. And that's it. This is how you can change your menu section as well. All right. So now the last thing left is our footer section. So we're going to change this together. So for this again, back to our WordPress dashboard, we go to widgets this time. And now you can close the very first one and scroll down the page. And as you can see, you have all the footer area here. So footer top area one, one to six. So this is the one here with our logo. Now click on this and you can replace the image. Okay, replace this with our own logo here, like we said. Okay, add, now update. So let's have a quick look first just to make sure everything's okay. There you go. Now with mrweb.tv and we're going to change our address here. So this one is part of block number two, which is column two. There you go. So all you have to do this one is simply click on it. And this is text. So just change the text for whatever you want, you know, uh, with your business details. And finally, we have this one here with the icons. And this is column number three. And there it is. And again, if you click on this, this one is a bit trickier. Uh, as you will see, let me expand this. This one is all HTML code. So if you're not familiar with HTML, it might look a little bit daunting, you know, but don't worry, I'm going to explain what this is actually. OK, so if you go back here to the top and you can see all these paths and then all the code here and ends up by forward slash SVG. This is basically the icon itself. OK, so if you go back to the top here, as you can see, it starts from here and then you have a href. So this is basically a hyperlink in HTML and you can see this is basically the, the address you need to change. OK. And what is this link to? Well, it's basically this icon here, the one here at the bottom, uh, just underneath. So this one would be Dribble initially, the first one, okay? So as you can see here, now where can you find those icons if you wanted to replace them with something else? You can go to fontawesome.com right here. You have icons. And if I look for Dribble as an example here, I'm gonna show you where the code is coming from, okay? There you go, uh, so we have this one here, that's Dribble. And as you can see, you have the HTML code and you have the SVG code. As you can, it starts by SVG, da 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 da, okay? Font awesome. And then it carries on. And as you can see, this is all the code and all the numbers that we see on screen. And if you go towards the end, you will see it ends up by forward slash SVG. And that's exactly what we have here. If you go at the bottom here, forward slash SVG. And that's basically it, you know. So if you wanted to replace this with another icon, maybe you don't have Dribble. Let's say you want to add YouTube. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do that. Basically, select that sequence here, all of this from path. There, okay. Uh, straight to the bottom until SVG. Delete, okay. And now you're going to look for another icon here. So let's look for YouTube maybe, okay. So YouTube. There you go. So we have this one here, which is a very nice one, you know. Click on this. And again, we're going to get the SVG code right here. So now I click on this. Now it's copied. Yeah. 
And now we go back here and we paste it here just before the closing ahref tag. So control V, okay, so update. Now let's have a quick look. So let's refresh. There you go, now we have the uh, YouTube icon, which is absolutely fine. And now we need to replace the HTML address, okay? So we go back on top, as you can see, this is the start of our ahref uh, tag. So right here, HTTP, da 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 You would then type YouTube.com, followed by your uh, channel name, okay? So let's add this together. So at Mr. Web and maybe your featured page, okay? So let's click update. And let's go back here and refresh and let's put this to the test and there you go as you can see this is bringing us to my channel so this is absolutely fine so we can close this window now and continue on and basically you would do the same with the others so the next one is twitter so let's try to locate this as you can see https twitter.com so we can change the uh, url first so i'm just going to put my handle here mr web reviews okay and then you have to find the path here so you can leave it obviously because that's the, that's the right one and then you have Instagram here as well. And then you could put your handle here again. Okay. So that's basically it. And this is how you can change this. So basically, if you want to change the logo itself uh, from the bracket here with path. Okay. Until the end where it says SVG, forward slash SVG. And you're going to fetch the code here immediately from uh, Font Awesome. Okay. So that's basically it. So let's go back to our page and let's refresh. And that's it, guys. I think we are all done now. So there you go guys, I hope you found this helpful, if so please consider giving us a thumbs up and feel free to share this with all your friends as well. Now if you want more of these you can always subscribe to our channel and if you want to watch more of these tutorials I'm going to leave a playlist right here.